Hey guys, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. If you listened a few episodes back about Alex and I opening up about our mental health, first we wanted to thank you for just creating the space for us to be able to talk on that topic. And we appreciate all of the love, comments, and feedback that we got on it. And we definitely want to continue to expand on those topics as a whole. So Alex, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I would just like to echo what Sue said and say thank you as well as uh, I think we'll have more of that in the future. I think that it was good. Um, I felt great recording it as well as a lot of you had reached out and said that you got a lot out of it. So I think that we'll have more of those type of episodes moving forward. Yeah, and that episode came about on one of our walks or one of our patio talks. It's normally where we do a lot of our brainstorming or just catching up with one another. And just the other night, we were back on our patio, surprise, surprise. And we started to talk about where our enjoyment and fulfillment comes from as a coach. And immediately, Alex said, this has to be a podcast topic. And I definitely agreed with him. So being able to just give you some of our thoughts that we had out on our patio um, and being able to expand on that. I think that within these patio talks, it's a time for us to really just be uh, vulnerable as well as honest with one another. It's it's a time where we have a conversation with the person that we trust and, and spend the most time with in general. So it's great for us to find the ideas for these conversations when we're in that setting. And so it's funny because we'll be talking and I'll be like, stop not another word. We're going to, we're going to talk about this on the podcast tomorrow. Do not say another thing. We're just going to pick up the conversation where we left off. And and that's today's episode. Yeah. So going into coaching, if you're listening to this and you might either be a potential client or you've been interested in PD, or maybe you're a coach listening to this, I still think it's going to be of benefit because you'll be able to really hear about what goes through our thought process when we are looking at accepting new clients and looking at what's in alignment. Because within the mental health episode, Alex talked about a big part is feeling aligned within the clients that he is working with. And that alignment has shifted over over the past little bit. And I want to be able to talk about it. Yeah. So when I first started coaching to give people some insight, I had come from a sports background. And so when I got started, I wanted to work with athletes in general and those different factors. If you're a personal trainer yourself or an online coach, you know that when you're getting started, it doesn't really matter who you want to work with. (laughs) You're going to work with whoever is willing to give you their time and and commit to you um, and and work with you. So it's, it's more of a matter of I've got to work with these individuals and make the best results happen, get them to the healthiest position possible and attain their goals so that I can work towards having some testimonials. I have social proof that I can do what I'm saying I can do. And then from there, you can kind of mold your way towards having the individuals that you want to work with. For some individuals, this can happen faster. For some, it's not so fast. I would say that I fell into the aspect of it not being overly fast. It took me four or five years to really work towards a place where I was being able to be more selective within the individuals that I was working with. And so over the last three years, I've had the opportunity to really pick and select, okay, this person really aligns with what I'm trying to do and who I want to work with. I'm going to work with this person. And so that kind of, uh, what's the, what's the word, the archetype or model for that person. Avatar. Avatar, There we go. (laughs) For that person has changed over the the last three years. I would say that three years ago, exactly, I would be looking for just competitors. I was very focused on the bodybuilding realm. I was focused on bikini. Um, And not to say that I'm not now, but I'm just saying in terms of comparison that at that time, that was the only person that I wanted to work with. Um, And getting people from the point of competing well on the regional stage, doing extremely well on the national stage, and then being able to take them onto the pro stage and and navigate through a, a pro career, if you will. I wanted to be able to mold them from start to finish throughout a career and really see them blossom over that time frame. I wanted to have a hand in the ability to take them from point A all the way to the end of their goal, because majority of the individuals who are competing are going to have the end goal of being a, a pro within the IFBB or an even greater goal of getting on that Olympic stage and being competitive on that Olympia stage. And I wanted that to be a part of it from start to finish. 
Yeah. And I'll just say like one quick thing about earning your stripes as a coach. You might think like, oh, if I already know who I want to work with, I just get to start working with them. But you do have to earn your stripes as a coach. Let's say that you want to be a head coach of an NFL football team. You don't start by being a head coach of an NFL football team. You start with maybe working at a high school level or a college level, and you're likely not going to step into a head coaching position at either of those levels. You might start, especially within college, as an offensive coordinator, or you are a quarterback's coach, and you're able to move your way up the ranks to truly get selective about what you want to do. So you might be like dragging through the mud a little bit and just working with, again, like Alex said, anyone who will literally commit to doing what you are trying to do as a coach. And this is within any aspect of any job. You kind of have to start at the bottom to work your way to be able to be more exclusive, if we want to use that word, or just being able to really pick who you want to work with and have that ability that you're not just waiting for, I need to pay my bills. I will literally help anyone that is willing to work with me to, okay, now I've established myself that I'm good in this. I can start turning people away and really nailing down on that niche that I want to be with. And so to get to that point of working with competitors, Alex and I have had this conversation of I used to be jealous of like, why are these girls wanting to work with Alex as competitors? And why don't they want to work with me when I want to work with competitors? And it was that I hadn't shown the social proof that I was able to make that happen for that level of competitor. And so I work with a lot of first time competitors that are really figuring out what it means to be in the sport. And that transitions to, okay, then being able to take girls to the national stage and more people trusting you and taking that next step. So if you're listening and you're like, well, I really want to work with this demographic and I already know it early on, you might still have to work with another demographic to get to that point. So just thought that that would be helpful to be able to touch on when it comes to anyone who is a coach and trying to figure out what they want to do as a whole. I would also add that when you're looking at the social media realm of things that you see coaches who are in their first or second year and they're making 10, 20, $30,000 a month. And they're uh, shouting this from the, the mountaintops and you're a first time coach. You're in your first year, your second year, your third year, um, and not making that kind of money. And you're feeling as though that you're feeling inferior to that individual, or you're feeling as though that you're doing something wrong within the process of building out your coaching service. And I want to sit here and tell you that for the <laughs> for the first gosh uh fi- like truly the first 5 years it was uh fighting tooth and nail for me to to get clients in the door to have them stay on board and, and those different factors and um I, I feel very fortunate that the the business coaching realm and those things weren't the hysteria as they are now uh, when I was coming up, because I know that I would have fallen into that same category of kind of beating myself up and comparing of like, damn, I need to, you know, do better because that person's doing better than me. And they're only, they just got started six months ago and they're making this kind of money and those things like money is a a cool part of this. And obviously a, a big part of why you complete a job because you need to be able to provide for yourself and your family and those different aspects. But I can assure you that the more that you just focus on getting the best and most incredible results with every single client that comes through your door. Because one of the things that many individuals run into is that they they have, let's say, 20 clients, but all they care about is the next one. And so the 20 clients that are there are getting a shit service. And then what those 20 clients are going to do when they're done are just tell other friends like, eh, it's not worth working with that person. But then that person's just chronically looking for 21 and 22, whereas all they needed to do was focus on this 20 that we're going to get them another client because of the word of mouth and be able to get it those 20 clients, great service for six months. Now those 20 clients stay. And all of a sudden they have one friend that they refer. You've got 40 clients and you didn't have to do any marketing because of the aspect of doing an incredible job with those 20 people. And so focus more on the quality of your service rather than counting the dollars and being like, well, that person's here and I'm here. So they're definitely better than me at this job. It's more of how can I be better with every single client and take care of everyone and get them to their results as quickly and as efficiently as possible and as healthy and sustainable as possible all at the same time. Yes. (laughs) And I think it's an Alex Hermosi quote. I might butcher the exact way he says it, but it's like the reason you're not making the money you want to make is you're not good enough at your job to make that money. Um, It's something along those lines, but basically saying, 
saying, you got to be good at what you do. And the more that you focus on being the best coach that you can be, the more that that money comes as a, not a side effect, but a process of the process. And so if you continue to focus on being a good coach, the money will keep coming. But if you continue to focus on just the money, then there's no promise that the money is going to continue to come because the thing that got people in the door is no longer there. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to hire the last coach that I'll ever need, then we cannot wait to get on a phone call with you. There's going to be an inquiry link below in the description box or the show notes. We'll hop on a call, talk about the service, and make sure that we get you living the life that you want to. Yeah, so we're, we went off on a side tangent yes, there. Yes, we did, but I think it was a helpful side yeah, tangent. Helpful. Um, you were talking about all you wanted to do was to be able yes. to take people to the pro stage and really work with competitors. And I'll even say a few, um, maybe it was a few years ago, I'm really bad with timelines because it just feels like everything's happened all at once. But there was a time that we were really working on getting all lifestyle clients off your roster because you were not enjoying working with the lifestyle clients. And so what has that looked like? Not only the transition of getting to that place of having more competitors, but how life has changed since then. So when we were focusing on getting those lifestyle clients off of my roster, the thing that was probably bothersome to me the most was the lack of commitment I was getting out of lifestyle clients because I was in this place of comparison where uh, the competitors were putting everything into every single day, whether they were in prep or they were in their improvement season. It was a a day-to-day grind and very, very um, diligent within getting their food in, getting their sleep maximizing all the factors. And so then I found myself in a situation where I was taking that and being like, well, this person's not getting as great of results. So I don't really want to work with them type situation. And over that time frame, over the last three years, I found that the the aspect of, of competing, this is so multifactorial, but the aspect within competing, there's a, a finite time that the person is going to compete. And the thing that the person needs to take away from competing is so much more valuable than just the competing itself. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to walk away with improvements in their work ethic. They need to walk away with improvements in their uh, time management. They need to walk away with greater discipline within their nutrition and their, uh, their training and those different factors. And unfortunately, some individuals walk away with issues from a hormonal health standpoint. They walk away with a very bad taste in their mouth of like competing, did this to me type situation or whatever that may be. And I've found that I've created so much greater enjoyment of of working with the individual maybe after the competing realm or during their time competing, but also being able to guide them post-show to put them in the best position to use these tools that they work so hard to build and strengthen during their time competing into their everyday life. Because it, it's challenging for, for competitors in general to be able to apply these things outside of their, their competing. I, I find that some competitors really struggle with that, of it being like, it's truly all or nothing. And I know that for myself, that's been something that I've struggled with in terms of of dieting in general, where growing up, I didn't have a whole lot of, well, zero experiences of needing to lose weight. I was very, very active and very, very skinny all growing up. So I didn't have any experience of dieting. So my first experience of dieting was my first time going into mm-hmm. a bodybuilding show. And so really for a, the time frame that I was competing, I found myself in a scenario, the only understanding was diet extremely to get extremely lean. And then when I'm in a surplus, all I'm trying to do is get as big as humanly possible. And so then those were my two, you know, uh, guidelines, which did not facilitate a good mindset towards dieting after my time being done competing. Who knows if I'm done? (laughs) (laughs) And so this current dieting phase that I'm in has taught me so much and has opened my eyes to just a completely different approach to how things can be. And it, it gives me an opportunity to have greater balance and understanding of like, it doesn't have to be all or nothing and be tracked so meticulously from um, every molecule food um, that you're consuming. Now, 
what's the fastest route to the fat loss? That, being very meticulous and, and getting things perfectly in those different factors. I agree that the most efficient route, but in terms of sustainability, I have discovered a whole new way of, of understanding it for me personally over the past six or seven weeks to, and I know that seems, that is a short period of time, I understand. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really opened my eyes of just overall enjoyment and how I can go about dieting as well. And that was pretty hard for you to come to that conclusion. I remember a couple of months ago, um, I believe I was still in prep of we had a heart to heart of, hey, I haven't wanted to say it because I'm struggling with this change in my mentality and this change in my life. And then it turned out we were both struggling to say it or come to the conclusion of I was coming to the conclusion of like, I don't think competing holds space in my life anymore. And you were coming to the conclusion of, I don't think I want to work with competitors anymore and or work with them less. And so since that, we've kind of sat on it and really tried to decide what is the next step moving forward? How do we want to position ourselves and what's important to us? So do you want to talk a little bit about why that was difficult to come to that conclusion? Um, maybe because like you had one wanted it for so long that it felt odd changing what you wanted? Yeah, I think I want to start by clarifying. It's not that I do not want to work with competitors. I think that one of my, my fears within recording this episode is it being grossly misinterpreted that it's like, he doesn't want to work with competitors anymore. He's not going to work with competitors anymore. That is not close to what I'm saying. And I, I think that what the the realization was is that I wanted to get out of the mentality of it being so focused on just competing. It felt like such a, a rat race as a whole in terms of uh, you get a pro card, the next person needs to get a pro card and just more pro cards, pro cards, pro cards, pro cards, and just competing um, every single moment and, and having competitors 24 seven and all these different things. And it being like, from a lifestyle standpoint, to have a competitor, you know, every weekend, like truly what I wanted was to be able to have competitors every single weekend and just have that be like the driving force from a, a week to week, month to month standpoint. Um, and I just don't, you know, want that aspect any longer. It's something where I thoroughly enjoy the competitors that I work with now. I thoroughly enjoy the, the challenge of it all and, and getting them to that point and accomplishing a goal that the competitor feels very aligned with. I think that that's the main thing that I'm trying to get to is be working with individuals that are very aligned with the goals that they have in place. Genuinely in the bottom, from the bottom of their heart, they want to accomplish what the goal is that's in front of them. And that is the, the main you know, focal point of the whole conversation, I would say, is that the competitors are fun to work with. I enjoy it. Um, but it's not the only thing that I want to do type situation and, and shifting to a place of, I've had such a beautiful opportunity over the last, my, my entire time working, uh, with individuals to give individuals the opportunity to accomplish different goals of looking amazing in their, in their wedding dress. I think that this is one of the more powerful things that I've had the opportunity to do is that, uh, to have a, a woman get to their wedding day and feel so confident and proud of, of how they walk down that aisle and when they put on that dress and they're getting their makeup done, it's a really, like that feeling to me is so powerful because that's something that's going to, those pictures could be in their house for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Like how many competitors are gonna have a <laughs> picture of them competing in their house or in their hallway for the rest of their life? probably very few, yeah. but a lot of individuals are going to have pictures from their wedding posted for the rest of their life. They're going to post on their 10 year, their 20 year, 30 year anniversary. And I feel that that's a very powerful place to be a part of that. The opportunity to get pregnant, the opportunity to be in a healthy position, to be able to have a healthy hormonal function and adequate body fat levels and, and those different factors to be able to have that opportunity, like nothing passes that either. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of situations that I've been able to um, work with other individuals outside of competing that has been so great. And then also the the competitor who's post-show and is really trying to navigate whether that be restoring hormonal function or it be something where they're trying to 
really find passion in the gym. One of the things that I am so grateful for is that I had such a strong passion to train before I got into bodybuilding. Like it was, it was all about training before then. And, uh, for a handful of individuals, or maybe even a greater number of people, they find themselves in a situation that they love bodybuilding. So they kind of train as a byproduct Mm -hmm. and then they're only training because of the show or because they're bodybuilding. And then when they're done bodybuilding, they're kind of lost of like, well, I didn't really like training to begin with. And so I really, really enjoy the opportunity to put someone in a situation where they love training, getting them to a place where they understand training better. And then they're doing things in the gym because they enjoy it, not because of a standard that's been placed on them from an outside uh, you know, source or, or what have you. And that's a really powerful feeling too. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options, complete with a timer in there, videos to the training and everything else you need to be successful. So can't wait to hear how much you love it. Yeah, and I I think that with the people that struggle post-show, it can also come from just a burnout of, again, their vision not being aligned with what they're truly wanting to do because they're having to push so hard and then they lose that passion or they lose that drive because they've pushed past the extreme and then they don't know where to find that middle ground. And when it comes to that middle ground, and you talked about like wedding preps and like being able to get pregnant and reversing post-show, but also just being able to find how somebody's quality of life changes by focusing on their health and not just, can I get as lean as possible and can I get this trophy? It's, can I do this and still improve my life? Because so many of those aspects that you talked about within competing, none of them did you mention was able to get the leanest possible. It was discipline and time management and all of these other traits that you can learn from competing. And if you can take that away from competing instead of the the other aspects of it or have that mentality towards it, that can change how you live your life. And like the other night you had said to me of like, I just love making a difference in someone's life. I love being able to get to a point where someone says like they love like how they feel. They're fueling their body. They figured out how their body works and how they can show show up for themselves instead of kind of feeling just trapped and not knowing what to do. I think the the sense of direction, um, the sense of direction within their training, the sense of direction within their nutrition, um, being able to understand the things that impact their body composition and, and how they feel, better prioritization of their sleep, water consumption, and it not being that dieting itself has to be this only one way to do things. And there being a way that it can be more structured to your life of, for instance, we've got clients who are going to be college students and navigating through their very busy schedule of also working and those things. And then we've got on the other side of things, uh, nurses who are working third shifts and trying to figure out how to eat with that. And then there's, there's moms who are taking their kids to school in the morning, taking them to soccer practice in the evening, um, and having to figure out how they can eat their foods, but also uh, take care of their two or three kids who are maybe eating differently than they are. Or how can I also get food at this fast food restaurant that we have to go to because we're in between practices or what have you. And so finding those answers for people and taking so much of the burden off of their shoulders and things that seem potentially so simple to us of like, duh, we do this every day type situation, has been so, so nice to have the opportunity to do that and work alongside them and provide them with an opportunity that is like long-term. Like competing is is very acute. There's benefits that you can take from competing that will lend a lifetime uh, of benefit for you. But what you're teaching in a prep is, is acute. Whereas in the setting that we're talking about and the things that we're talking about, these are ways that we can impact over a lifetime. And that is so much more powerful uh, and important to me. 
Yeah, I think that it really hit me when I I client had responded to me and said like I now know how to like teach my kids about food and I feel that like I can really change how they're growing up like comparatively to how I grew up and my knowledge about food. And we've even had that conversation when talking about our own children and how we want to raise them and the principles we want to put in place. We're not going to be having our our children walking around counting macros because they need to stay lean. It's to show them like this is what it looks like to live a lifestyle where you prioritize your health so you can continue to live that lifestyle and show up for other aspects in your life, show up for yourself, show up for different people and continue to live that life that you do love instead of it being something that turns into how do I lose 10 pounds the quickest? How do I get um, 20 pounds down before I go on this vacation? I I don't have any desire to work with a client that is trying to lose weight extremely fast to get to an event. I have the desire to work with a client who wants to learn how to change their life because they're not living the life that they want to live now or they're not living it to the fullest that they can live it because their health or their mindset is possibly holding them back when it comes to what they're doing when it when it, going to the gym or making food or living their daily life. Yeah, it's a it's a powerful place to be, uh, being able to make that impact that we continue to talk about within your coaching and and things that you're prioritizing of of individuals that you're wanting to to work with. Um, what have you found over the last three years to be kind of the the thing that's been the most impactful for you, um, or the thing that you're desiring the most when a new client you know comes in or, or what have you? Yeah, I think that it it's hard to change what you thought you wanted or what you really worked toward for a period of time. And my goal was always to work towards like being, and I believe it's like written down in a journal somewhere that Alex and I talked about of like being one of the top female contest prep coaches. And like that was a huge goal of mine. And I dedicated a lot of time of my own to not only competing, but learning about competing, the ends of outs being at shows, like um, like spending so much time analyzing the sport to be better at it. And then to find the shift that I felt that I wasn't as fulfilled or wasn't finding as much joy of working with competitors or with um, that being my sole base that I was working with because it was always chasing after when's the next show instead of like how do I set up my life as a whole. And so that was really difficult to me because I felt this immense friction of you said you wanted to do this, like follow through and hit that goal and like show that you can do it instead of just changing your mind. And I felt like flippant about it about it, even though I'd spent time really thinking about it, because I was like, I said I was going to do this. I need to do this. And it just came to a front where I felt that friction. And it was like, this friction is here because this is not what you are supposed to be doing with all of your time. And so the clients, and I had expressed this to Alex of like, the clients that I'm working with right now are very much so like we're having conversations about how they need to implement something and the mindset they need to take and really pushing of them making decisions for themselves. So I had a client recently and she was going on vacation and we were trying to figure out how she was going to navigate through still being in a diet. So I'm still about people losing weight and reaching their goals and looking the way they want to, make no mistake there. Um, So she's in a diet and she was trying to figure out how she was going about vacation. And I was like, this is the thought process that I take when I'm going on a trip and this is what I want you to have an honest conversation with yourself and then tell me what your answer is and we are going to move forward with that being the designation that we take on that trip. And then I want you to reflect on how you felt during that trip, what you would change and if you want to do that moving forward so that I'm really putting the tools in each client's hands. There's a reason that our tagline is to be the last coach that you ever need. It's because I truly don't want you to just get a result and then 
leave and then in a few years be like, I want to lose weight again. I'm going to hire another coach. I want you to have the skills to have the internal conversations so that you can make it a lifestyle and you can learn about this and how it applies to your life and how you structure things to show up for yourself. So I also had a client respond in a check-in and um, their non-scale victory was they're like, I found out I love movement. It's not for fat loss. It's not because I need to burn more calories or because I feel pressured to move because that's what fitness tells me to do or the fitness industry tells me to do. It's because I truly feel better when I move my body. And I was just like, that. that's it. Like, that's what I, I want you to be able to figure out is like, what makes you feel your best? And how do you implement that into your daily life so that your life can feel the best? Because we've all had it of going through a day to day where you just don't feel good. And being able to get to the spot that I am now, when people ask me about motivation or discipline or anything like that, yes, I feel like I have great discipline and I can very much so execute on um, topics, but I also feel like I know what it feels like to feel the opposite and I'm not willing to go back to that. So no matter how bad my day is and I don't want to get out and go for a walk or I don't want to meal prep my food or I don't want to go and work out, I'm always have in the back of my head of like, well, you definitely don't want to go back to how you felt a few years ago. And that's enough kicking my ass to be like, you're going to keep showing up for yourself because your worst day now doesn't even compare to your worst day a few years ago. And that's because you took the time to truly learn about your body and how you need to work to make it work for you. The big thing to drive home is that this is not a uh, a, a podcast, us kind of like breaking the news that we're no longer working with competitors. Yeah. That's not what we're trying to get across. I think that more so the point is of we still love working with competitors. It's not just like that's not the only thing that we're trying to do any longer. And it was the goal years ago to be able to have that be the sole focus and be so intertwined into the um, the competing world and that be the only thing. And then us having the coaches work on other aspects within wellness and those different things. Um, but I'm finding that there's a there's a balance to it all. I can still have the roster of, of clients who are going to be competing and competing extremely well and earning their pro card and, and those different aspects. Um, but I can also still have that percentage of my, my roster that is lifestyle and that are very hardworking. That's the thing too, is I've got I got some lifestyle clients that kind of outwork some of my competitors. I'll be (laughs) honest with you. Um, I've got some dogs within my uh, lifestyle clients that really, really train hard and have such a burning passion for training. Um, And I think that that's like the root of the coaching experience for me is finding someone who really dives into the training and really enjoys that and, and wants to learn more and wants to find themselves getting stronger across a multitude of different movements and being able to uh, have that be the the purpose within the gym of getting stronger and chasing those strength strides and, and body composition improvements um, is is huge. Well, I just want to say before we close it out, it's been really cool just to see the impact that you've had on the clients that um, I've been able to have the pleasure of interacting with, as well as just seeing the transformations <laughs> time and time again on your page of the incredible results you've you've brought that social proof through and through that you can do your job. Um, But it's even cooler to have that impact instead of just having the transformations. I know that there are so many clients that I've either personally talked to or I've seen them post about just what a change that you have made in their life. And so I'm always pro you doing what you love and you doing what is going to make you the happiest, as well as like I know, as we talked about in the last, uh, the mental health episode, like how much you've changed my life and my quality of life. And so being able to see you do that for others is really fulfilling for me. So double, double, win, win, win (laughs) of all the fulfillment. Uh, But that'll be all for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.